Hey everyone, this is Kyle with the Bricto Security, and today we're continuing on with Tier 2 of the Hack the Box Starting Point Series with the Archetype Box. Let's get going. Alright, so I already got a box up and running here. I'm going to grab our IP, hop right into Cali, and I'm going to do a sudo and map, put in our IP, do a dash SC to do a standard script search, and then do a dash SV to do a version search. I'm gonna let this run, I'm gonna get back to you in a second. All right, so we got a couple open ports here. We have 135, 139, 445, and 1433. Uh, with SMB on port 445, it does say that message signing is disabled, so we might be able to use something there. But we also have uh, 1433, which is the uh, MS SQL standard port. So we've used this tool in the past called SMB Client. If you don't actually remember using it, go ahead and take a look at the video right here but I'm going to use that. So let's scroll down to the bottom. I'm gonna do SMB clients. Let's enumerate all the open shares to us. So we're not actually gonna provide any password with this tool. So I'm gonna do a dash capital N and this is gonna indicate no password. And I'm gonna do a dash capital L and that's gonna show us all shares that we have open to us. Then we're gonna be four backslashes. And then we're gonna put in our IP address for our attack box and then add two more backslashes to the end of that. Press enter on that. And we can see the different shares that are open from SMB since there is no SMB signing enabled or required. So the admin share, the C share, and the IPC share are all pretty standard, but the backups one actually looks like something that may be interesting to us. So let's rerun our SMB client command. I'm gonna remove this dash L because we don't need to list all the shares. And I'm gonna put in backups after our last two backslashes. Press enter on that. And now we have direct access into this backups share so i'm going to type in dir and we can see all the directories that are open and we can see that we actually have one file that it's a production.dts config what we can do is get it and we're going to get the prod file now download that we can exit it now hit an ls we can see that we have that prod file i'm gonna go ahead and count that out and just see what it is see what's on there and just looking over this, uh, it looks like we have a password right here with the user ID right next to it. But what's interesting about this is that it looks to be a login from the archetype box for a SQL server. And we know that port 1433 was open with Microsoft SQL. So what we can try to do is log in directly into that database. So what we can use is something from Impacket called MS SQL Client. I'm gonna open up another tab here and I'm going to CD into my opt folder. That's kind of where I keep all of my normal operations. And I'm going to do a sudo git clone and I'm gonna grab the the impact it link right there press enter on that I'm gonna let that run I already have this so I'm going to just CD into impact it and the next command you're going to do is sudo pip3 install with a period at the end that's going to install all the requirements and everything that you need in order to run all the impact and modules that they have now once that's finished we can CD into examples ls and the one pi that we were going to be looking to use is going to be the ms sql client.py right there sorry about that i had impact a break on me for a second but why don't we go ahead and see what ms sql can do so i'm going to do sudo python 3 ms sql clients and then dash h put in password again sorry second time's the charm all right, and so we have our normal impact syntax being the domain forward slash, give it a username, uh, password, and at, and then whatever our target IP address is going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, we're going to do up once, and we're gonna go back. We're going to grab our user ID right here, and that's going to be archetype. This is our domain that we're gonna paste in. Now I'm gonna do a forward slash and then grab that username. That's going to be the SQL underscore service right there. We're going to do an add sign. Let's go back into hack the box, grab our IP address and paste that in right there. Press enter on that and it's going to ask for our password from our configuration file. We have our password right here. Copy that over, paste it in one more time, press enter and it says that encryption is required. So what's interesting for that is it's probably authenticating using a box or some kind of Windows authentication. Luckily for us, we have a Windows auth right here from Impacket. So I'm gonna press up one more time and I'm going to do a dash Windows 
dash auth. Press enter one more time. It's going to ask for that password again. I'm going to paste that in. And there we have access into the SQL database. If I were to type help, we can tell the different commands that we are going to be able to use. The one that we are probably going to be looking to utilize is going to be this enable XP command shell. So simply I'm just going to type enable XP command shell. Press enter on that. And it's gonna ask us if we would like to reconfigure using that setup. So I'm gonna type in reconfigure, give it a semicolon at the end because as a SQL statement, you must always end with a semicolon. And so now we should have an XP command shell open. So if I were to use XP underscore command shell, and then just give it some kind of arbitrary statement. So for this particular statement, I'm just going to do a double quote and a who am I? Close that off. And we can see from our output that we are archetype SQL service with access to being able to use an XP command shell. Now we can't actually utilize this to run any full commands because remember we are inside this SQL server, but we might be able to do is have this server here using our XP command shell to reach back out to our local host from a reverse shell. So there's gonna be a couple things that I'm going to do here. So what I'm gonna do is open up another tab over here just to the right, and I'm going to have us utilize a netcat listener. So I'm gonna put this into the description, but that you can go and actually download netcat. So I'm gonna go grab that netcat right here, paste that in, and this is going to be where we are going to download netcat from. If I just press the download button right here, it's going to download into our local box. So if I were to CD into downloads, hit NLS, we can see that we have our Netcat 64 listener right there as an EXE. Now, how are we going to get that EXE onto our SQL database server that we have logged in over here? Well, let me open up another terminal. I'm going to open up right below it. I'm going to CD into our downloads folder again, just so that we're within the same folder that we have our EXE on. And I'm going to do a sudo python3 m http.server, and I'm going to give it a port 80 to listen over the web interface. Press enter. Have to put in our password again. Now we need to have a netcat listener actually open and listening for us. And that's pretty simple. I'm just going to do a sudo netcat-nlvp, and it's going to ask for a specific port. Now I'm going to give this a port 443 because I want this to be sent over HTTPS, so it's not looking for anything that's not authenticated or encrypted. Let's put in our password one more time. Now we're going to have a netcat listener listening over anything that's over 443, as well as having our server up and listening for anybody to try and fetch something from our local server that we have created. So let's go back over into our SQL database and let's make sure that we actually have access and to be able to use something like PowerShell. I'm gonna press up just so we have our command shell open again, and I'm going to try something like PowerShell dash C to invoke a specific command and then PWD just to see if we get like a simple path being sent to us. Press enter and it was able to pull a path saying we are C colon Windows system 32. Great. The next thing that we're going to do is have this particular service try to reach back out onto our local box to see if it can download a specific file for us. I'm gonna press up one more time. Now, instead of doing dash C PWD, why don't we go ahead and put this in a specific file? So I'm gonna do dash C, why don't we CD over into C colon backslash users, backslash the specific username being SQL underscore SVC backslash downloads, because we wanna keep everything within our same user download folder. We wanna keep everything inside our specific user folders because we are not admin on this box right now. While we have administrator privileges to run and execute commands, we ourselves are not admin on this box. We are just a user on this server. I'm gonna close off that statement. We can put a semicolon there. And now I'm gonna use something called wget in order to fetch something from our local Python server that we have set up right over here. 
we have wget i'm going to http colon slash slash we need to get our ip of our tunnel that we are using let me open up another tab just run a quick if config here is our local tunnel that is going directly back to hack the box i'm going to paste that in now i'm going to do a slash whatever file we are looking to use since we are within the downloads folder on our server that is currently listening, I'm going to look to have it grab this nc64.exe. So you just type in n64.exe. And we need to provide this an out file, which is just going to be whatever it renames this new file as. I'm going to keep it same. We don't need to obfuscate this by any means. We're not looking to hide from anybody on the other side. Close this off with our quotation marks. Press enter. And we can see right there, it went and grabbed and it got our n64.exe from our Python server. Okay, now that this server that we have running from the specific user is listening to us, what we need to do now is have it go and call back to our Netcat listener to open up a reverse shell. Let me press up on this once. We can remove this second statement because it went and got our file already. Now we're gonna stay within the downloads folder. So we were going to continue to CD over into the users, the SQL service, and then downloads. But now we're gonna have it try to call back into our Netcat listener. To do that, we're going to have it run a file doing a dot and a backslash. The file that it's going to run is going to be nc.64.exe. Dash E is going to execute that command. We're going to do command.exe in order to run a shell. And then we just need to have a call back to our netcat listener, which is going to be on that ton IP address that we had. So I just pasted that back in and it's whatever port we have set up. So it's going to be over 443. Press enter on that, and there we have our Netcat listener server open. I'm gonna go ahead and close our Python server because we don't need to have that listening anymore. And we're just gonna be directly working with our Netcat reverse shell. Type ls, oops, sorry about that. If I type dir, because we are on a Windows machine, we can see that we have our Netcat listener from our downloads folder right there. I'm gonna do cd dot dot and then cd over into the desktop. Hit dir one more time, and right there we can see we have our user flag. We can see that if we just do type user.txt, and this is our user flag that we are going to put into our hack the box answer. All right, so now that we have our user flag, why don't we go ahead and try to find the administrator one by looking for any escalated privileges. And we can go through and try to use something like WinPs in order to look for some potential vulnerability. We can scan the rest of the networks if we find anything else, or we can do something like going and checking the history to see if a password has ever been put into like a terminal or console or something of that nature. This is very similar to what we do in Linux. If you type in history on a Linux machine, you'll get everything that's been done previously. Windows has its own version of that. And so what we can do is actually go into a specific folder in a file, there is a PowerShell history. To find that, I'm going to stay in our reverse shell. I'm gonna do a CD dot dot. And I'm gonna CD into app data. And I'm gonna CD into this really long string. CD into roaming, Microsoft, Windows, PowerShell, PS, read line. Now if I hit dir on this, we can see that we have our console host history.txt. Again, we can view this file the same way we did before by hitting type console hosts underscore history.txt. Sorry, I think I might have mistyped. Let's try it again. Type console host underscore history. Uh, wow, I can't type txt. And we can see from our console history, they use the net exe onto a T drive in the backups folder. And here we have listed out a user and password. That was great. Now that we have a username and password on this specific machine, I'm gonna use something else from Impacket called psexec to directly log into this Windows service. So I'm gonna open up another tab here. I'm gonna CD over to my op folder, impact it, go into examples. 
hit an LS, and the thing that we were going to use is psexec.py. This is going to be the exact same formatting that we used before for all of mpacket. So we're going to do sudo python3 psexec.py. Now we're going to put in the username, administrator. Give it an at sign. Let's go back and grab that IP address. Put that in. Press enter. Uh, it's going to ask for my local password. And it's going to ask for that administrator password that we found before being the Megacorp admin with two exclamation points. Let me copy that over, paste that in, press enter, and it has started via WMI service onto this new machine. Now, if I'd like to, I can type who am I just to confirm we are a full authority system onto this machine. We are authority system. Now we just have to go find our flag. We can CD over into the C drive users, administrator, desktop. LS on that, sorry, dir for a Windows machine. There's our root. If I do type root.txt, and there is our root flag. Now let's go back in and answer the rest of these hack the box questions. What TCP port is hosting a database server? That was port 1433, and that is your standard MS SQL server. What is the name of the non-administrative share available over SMB? That would be backups. What is the password identified in the file on the SMB share? That was the Megacorp123. That was our individual user that we found on the configuration file. What script from in packet collection can be used in order to establish an authenticated connection to a Microsoft SQL server? That was the MS SQL client.py. What extended stored procedure of Microsoft SQL server can be used to order to spawn a Windows command shell? That would be XP underscore command shell. What script can be used in order to search possible paths to escalate privileges on Windows hosts? That was WinPs. Now we didn't actually use WinPs in this instance, but it is something that we will explore in future boxes. What file contains the administrator's password? That was the console host underscore history dot txt. And you'll submit your user flag and your root flag in order to have completed the archetype box. Congratulations on completing your first tier two box on Hack the Box starting point series. These boxes are going to get a little more difficult as we are now starting to learn how to get our initial foothold and then learn to get into more privilege escalation from administrative users. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.